yeah, let's have a the last video. I've shown you the unpacking of the heat pump, and as you could see on the actual image of the main video, the heat pump was installed. Well, how's it been? So I've had it for just over a week, I think it is. I don't think the bees will be out today, but the temperature is cold. I'm not saying nine degrees there. So yes, the air source heat pump is pumped, is in, but I've had a problem. I couldn't get it working. It was all wide up. There it is. And there's the display saying the ambient temperature on the actual, in the actual units is isolated at the minute is one degrees. Um, I didn't think last night was going to be as cold actually, but obviously it was. I've got it all wrapped in this stuff now. This stuff's really good. But no matter what I did, it didn't fire up. So I've been in communication with the, they were called Superior Wellness, who do hot tubs. And they got through WhatsApp messaging and stuff like that. Comes to it, I've got everything set up right, piped up right they couldn't but they still could give me an answer of why and for a visit they wanted 112 pound i think for a visit so anyway got back to the seller and the seller put me in contact with one of their contacts um hot tub seller in scotland so i got on to them on whatsapp and went through the same sort of things and he says that he's got another one they've got another one and they'll send it me so after a week of messing about, to in and throw it if you want, I got this yesterday, which was Friday, got it the next day delivered for me, great, fantastic service, piped it back up, took me about 15 minutes to disconnect it, get this one, there's the old one, brand new, there's the new one, brand new, same problem, exactly the same problem, could not believe it, I was absolutely gutted. So anyway, I took the lid off, um and i'm not gonna do it it's not no screws in at the minute but cutting a long story short i got my multimeter out i'm a gas engineer by trade so i've got a multimeter um i'm in management now so i'm a bit out of you know touch a little bit with the tool side but i've still got my tools and everything it's only been seven years since i've been off the tools but anyway I took the lid off looked at the power outs the power in there was 240 volt the two power outs no power coming out of the unit so something is preventing it from kicking in so anyway what i did the two outs i linked up to the 240 volt because it's 240 volt unit and then two outs one goes to the compressor which is here and then one goes to the uh, starter and the fan so when I put when I powered them up, it fired up. I touched one live first and the fan fired up, then I touched the other one, and then I touched them both together, live linked them both together, left it running for about 20 minutes, and the it, the heat went up 0 0.2. So the unit does work. But I cannot get it firing up through the controller. What a nightmare. So it's not been in use, so at least I've proved it works. I don't know what I'm going to do with that one yet. So anyway, go back on to WhatsApp chat last night to the guy that sent it me from Scotland, the hot tub company. And he says he will give me a call today on WhatsApp. So that's that with that. So, yeah. At least it works, but for some reason, it won't... Um, it just won't have it, it won't fire up through that controller, so we've somehow got to work out what's happening and get it working without it, because when it fired up, it was only on for 25 minutes, there was quite a bit of uh, frost forming on the pipes and stuff, so I know it was working, and there was quite a frost on the actual, um, oh, can't remember what it's called now, the grid at the back. Crikey, I've got some water pumping through there, haven't I? As you can see. Water's gone down to 11.3. Yeah.
when I left that last night, that was one degree warmer. So the fish won't like that temperature fluctuation. And that's why I want the air, air source heat pump because these two heaters in here aren't giving me that consistency and the fish don't like it. They really don't. So that's, yeah, and because that's, that's on quite a lot, because what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be once, well, I say once, I'm not gonna, gonna touch some wood. Once I get that air source heat pump properly working and left on, I've got to supply three different sources, and so I've got the bypass, which I'll probably leave open at, uh, uh, to some degree, the valve going to the air source heat pump, and then the valve to this. Now at the minute, Bloody hell, I'm pumping too much in there, look. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's from last night, look. I have literally got that on its maximum, what it can cope with. But at least I know it can't overflow, which is a good thing. Good test, because what I've done, I've got this on full, look. I left that on full, I've not reduced it. So too much flow rate is going through that because last yesterday before it got dark between four and five I decided to like I say I put the I put the swap the air source heat pump changed everything over so I quickly had to turn things on got the water flowing round and then because it was going to be cold last night I isolated the actual air source heat pump and because I didn't want that water circulating out through the air source seed pump and back in, cooling this water down, so for obvious reasons. So I've got to watch that now and see where this comes down to. So I probably should have had this open a little bit more. Just a little bit. If you just give them a tap, you can get them more dialed in. So we'll see where that lands now. And well, obviously that valve is turned off. So let's see if this is going down. Yep, there we go. So that could have ended badly. Fortunately though, I did turn the pump down as well. The fish are looking quite good. This one's still recovering, but it needs some warmth. I did notice it started getting a bit pinky on its skin again. But um, hopefully that's going to settle down. So once the temperature gets a bit warmer in here, I am going to get these out, get the bowl in here, get the bowl down, get it on here, get some sedate in there, lightly sedate them. And then that one's going to come out first, get the skin cleaned up and give it a good start. This one, the Shintaro, I've mentioned that a few times. On this side, there's a little uh, knock scale, got a race scale. And obviously there's a bit of muck under there. Um, and that's not healing as it should because you can just see it's, it's like raised, like a lesion on that side lot. See it? You can just see it there, look on this side just under that benny so that's probably going to ruin the benny a bit and i think that's all down to the nitrite and ammonia we're getting this all settled howdy Ooh, been having fun with this heat pump right i think i've got to the bottom of it on my own on the actual controller there is a um three connections and one's to the hyper to the pressure switch um, and then one is to the ambient temperature and then the source temperature something like that so the three connections there is one at the end which goes to a remote controller and what I did I had a mess about I took the pressure switch connection off and put it on that one just messing about and it fired up then the compressor fired up and it fired motored on. So I thought, well, that's a bit weird. Anyway, the guy who's meant to be helping me is that contact me today. So what I did, the controller um, cable, it just loops, just got two end spades, and that's it. There's nothing else done it on it. So what I've done is I've linked them through. So I think 
the, the way it's set up, because of the end connection, it's expecting um, the control to be from another source, a remote source, which obviously hasn't got. Anyway, I've been running it now for a good hour and it seems to be working, thank God. So I've actually got two of those units at the moment. The, the person's not contacted me again, so I'm not going to bother contacting them. I'll just see how this goes. I'll switch you around and let you know where I am because I've been checking temperatures. So the water temperature, I've been messing with the flow rates. The pump is now on uh, 71 watts, 70 watts. So I could possibly turn that down because what I've done I've got my multimeter, it's got a temperature on it. So the actual pool temperature is 12. And if I put, it's quite cold today as well. I've actually turned this flow rate down on here, on the return, because it was twice as much as that. It probably was running about 2,400 litres an hour. And that would turn this whole volume over every hour. Now what I've done, but the temperature difference between the water temperature, so that's the water going in to the air source heat pump and the water out, was about three degrees. Now since messing with the flow, the valve, so I've reduced it, reduced the flow through, and I've now got, you've seen the temperature a minute ago, was 12 degrees pool temperature, I've now got an output of 17 degrees which is five degrees different so I'm going to leave that running now the Sun is out it, where the air, air source heat pump is it really is a um, heat trap around the back there so what, what I will be interested with is how low this heat pump is effective to now what I do know, on the actual settings, I can put the um, temperature, pool temperature, there's like a setting on it where it cuts off, if the, if the air pump cuts off, if the pool temperature is a certain temperature. And I've actually, you can actually, it was automatically set to 5 degrees, so you imagine if you've got this on a hot tub, and it's on 5 degrees, you're not going to get the hot tub down to 5, if the pool temperature went down to 5 degrees, the air pump would turn off. Now, so it's running. Now, the only strange thing is it's still saying it's 12 degrees. Or is that the outside air temperature? That might be the outside air temperature. Have a look. the minimum temperature that I can have the actual water temperature at look. Oops, hang on. Come on you bugger. within 15 so if I go temperature difference of 1 that's where it kicks in and on and off and that's the setting where if you want it to airport the air source you can shut off at a certain temperature 5 degrees or 15 20 whatever differential of 1 again that's the auto setting so if it loses power it automatically saves these settings That is a differential. You can add like a temperature setting, a temperature on the other setting, but I'm not using that. Oops, wrong way. That's the pool temperature. Uh, oh no, that's the that's saying that's what the air temperature is. 
I remember right. That's the pool temperature. That's it running. So got to leave it now and see what it does. If anything. Well, the only thing is it's hard to tell I mean it was really cold last night when I put it on and the actual was there was actually frost forming quite quick on the actual um, grills and everything so at the minute I'm not sure well let's have a look at the Oh, the pool temperature now is on, it's on 12.4, it's saying in here. And when I came in, it was on 11 point, can't see that, 11.9. So it's actually gone up half a degree. Insulation wrap that I've bought, really good stuff, guys. You've probably all seen this. It's this stuff. And it's a couple of inch, and it's a good four mil, and it sticks like mad. It really does stick well. And that's what I've got wrapped on the pipe out there. So now I've got it working and I'm quietly confident I don't need to disconnect the cables, uh, the pipes again. I'm going to get some of uh, this on. I paid £301 for this heat pump delivered. That's why I bought it. Now it might not be ideal. I know it's not one that can work down to minus 20, but bearing in mind, like I say, I paid £300 delivered for a brand new air source heat pump. And I've actually got a second one. So I don't know what they want to do with that, whether they want to pay potion and get it, get someone to collect it. It's up to them, but I don't think they're going to bother. I really, I, I don't know. So there's the coil up at that outlet. They can certainly feel the temperature difference of five degrees coming out of there to the actual pool temperature. Can imagine it's like being in front of a little eater it don't seem a lot you know it don't seem a lot you, you put your hand there you don't go oh it's lovely and warm because the pond temperature is, isn't warm but um let's see what happens so we'll, we'll have a quick look at the cactoily 7.9 what i will do oops I will start paying a bit more attention now and monitoring like the difference because you do get differences at night time and daytime. Now what this doesn't do, it's a shame, it's a shame you can't get an app, there's not an app and you can tap into readings and it graph them out. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll come in in the day and it's a, I'd say, let's say it's eight and then I'll come in tonight and then I'll come in first thing in the morning. Hi everyone, I've had a good, well I'll say good, a strange couple of weeks. The last video I had an air source heat pump, the mini air source heat pump, and uh, I'm in the greenhouse as normal, once a day I come in here for a good spell, and uh, we have it a bit of a cold spell, and I've got an update with the air source heat pump, I go away in a couple of days, so I'll be back by the time this video goes out, um, so it's now Tuesday, and the core are looking um, okay, as you can see, the actual outlet there and it's I've actually changed so it's enclosed and it goes into here which was my overflow but anyway I'm going to get on to the air source seeds pump because I wanted to give you an update with that and as you can see I've now changed it somewhat the installation there um, the actual UV is not plugged in yet that's what all that cable in is there that's not, that's not plugged in yet so anyway, doing a bit more research, so on and so forth. I come back, had a good bit of spell on it. Took the UV out there. So I thought, right, I've got this sitting about. Piped it up. Took the UV out. Piped the heater up to run through. Air source heat pump outside comes in. Then I thought, if the air source heat pump packs up, I've got to back up. Great, good idea, isn't it? Because that's always bothered me if you're providing heat in winter or you're maintaining the minimum. So try and keep it balanced. So, I've changed my mind anyway, but digressing. 
So then I got on to, oh, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do? Oh, so I'm going to leave the, leave the Evo 25, the UV. And then I thought, no, you know what? I'll cut it in on that pipe to this. So at least I've got it on a circuit to help with algae. I just hope that it don't clog up in here, but I don't think it will. So anyway, that's what I've done there. Thought, great, fantastic. Air pump, so yesterday got all up and running. Oh, the other thing, because that controller um, only goes to 15 degrees minimum, you can't go below 15 degrees, which that might not be a problem to some people, but I didn't want it, I thought, well, I don't want it running to maintain 15, because it's gonna struggle if it shuts off at zero. So once it reaches zero degrees outside air temperature, the unit will kick off. So nothing will be maintaining the, the minimum temperature in here. Hence, that's there as backup. Okay? That's there as backup. In the meantime, I put a return request in for the seller of the, because it was faulty, initial, initially faulty. But it's just a link. So anyway, this is a story. So, I've been in contact with some few people that's bought mini air source heat pumps and what they do is they buy the STC 1000 controller there you go and you put it in a little sandwich box so it's actually sealed like so and basically what that does is the power goes in it goes into the unit because the unit needs power to operate. There's a link that links through back into there and goes back into the unit, puts power in and then switches over. This switches over so I can have this set on 12, 9, 5, whatever I want. And then it sends power back out to the air source heat pump. The air source heat pump turns on, be a three minute delay and then it kicks in and starts and runs got to hold my hands up i think i've dropped a clanger there with the air source heat pump the literature that i've seen on some websites was it works down to i've seen one say minus seven and one minus 15 so i thought oh it's minus seven but actually the not it's not really efficient unless it's above five six seven so it's like a it's not an all-round solution it's for a may to say through to September solution which could I make work so this is where it's got me thinking where I've changed my thinking now air source heat pump kicking in May to September so you've got five months of warmth topping it up backed up by the natural heat in here from the sun so it shouldn't be a problem hopefully um, and then after that tailor it down keep it going as much as possible 15 bring it down bring it down september october november and then when when, when the heat is really gone so the e, e source heat pumps it's just too inefficient to run them on or heat the pond then start to give them push it to but then round about maybe december january february give them three months of potentially no heat in here so the air source heat pump isn't kicking in and then have it so this temperature in here just drops to my heaters are kicking in which is about nine ten degrees at the moment or eight about eight i think i think i'm pushing it about eight degrees they'll kick in so these then don't get fed for a period of three months so they get a proper three months of proper clear the guts have a cleanse any parasites in the pond will die off so they get a proper winter break that's what i'm thinking two three months worth depends on the winter might stretch out a bit but not to the extremes of the outdoor ponds so try and maximize it as much as possible so that's what i'm going to be thinking of doing